There's a few cool aces out there, Ace Freely, Ace Hunter, Ace the Bat Hound, Ace Ventura, Ace the Hardware Store, but we're talking about none of those today. Today is all about Ace, the G.I. Joe pilot named, well, Ace. Let's talk about him. Before we do, thanks for watching JLS Comics. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. I do upload videos just like this every week. All right, let's jump into our story. Brad J. Armbruster hails from Rhode Island, a mere six miles from Hasbro headquarters in Providence, Rhode Island. There's another version of Armbruster, also codenamed Ace, whose name is Wendell. And Wendell was Ace's name on a pre-production file card, and Wendell's not from Providence, he's from Seattle, Washington. Another variant of Ace is from the United Kingdom. Action Force Ace is from Montreal, Canada. But back to our Rhode Island friend. When he was growing up, Brad loved planes and the idea of flying, and so his head was always in the sky. When it wasn't in the clouds, he was buried in a deck of cards, as he also loved card games and gambling. In high school, Brad took on part-time jobs in order to pay for flying lessons. Once Brad got his pilot's license at 19 years old, he took on work in Alaska flying the oil pipelines and then another two years as a stunt pilot for Hollywood Film Studios. At age 22, Brad enlisted in the United States Air Force, graduating schools like Combined Services E&E before he was assigned to an elite fighter weapons squadron known as the Aggressors. Brad is qualified in all planes with an F designation, anything from an F-4 to an F-35. He can go from a Phantom Driver to Panther Tamer. And anything from close quarters combat dogfight to beyond visual range and from the upper limits of the atmosphere to nap of the earth. And if some of G.I. Joe's arsenal is to be considered, he's already qualified on 6th generation fighters. With the Aggressor Squadron, Brad was promoted to a senior instructor. As his file card says, Brad can push a twin engine air superiority fighter to the red line, performing daring aero maneuvers that other pilots would find impossible. His 2004 file card says he's also part of Air Force Tactical Air Command, although TAC was deactivated in 1992 when it was rolled into Air Combat Command. But after all of this, Brad joined the G.I. Joe team, and his affinity for gambling would typically be a disqualifying factor. However, Brad never loses, so they say, but he hasn't played me. And so his codename of Ace is derived from his card proficiency and not his stick proficiency. With G.I. Joe, Ace appeared in Marvel Comics and Larry Hama's comic book series with issue number 14. The Joe team had gotten intel off of a micro dot that Cobra was at A. Springfield in Vermont. So while Bill dropped an APC full of Joes outside of that Vermont town for an assault. And a furniture store in town turned out to be a missile silo. So Hawk called in an airstrike. And Ace, his Sky Strike leader, flew in for a ground and pound attack. And they destroyed the factory, but a rocket plane with Cobra Commander on board got away safely. After the attack in Washington, D.C., Zap, Grunt, Rock and Roll, Short Fuse, and Flash were in an APC pursuing Cobra Commander up the interstate highway. Above them, at low altitude, was Ace acting as a spotter for the APC. And once he spotted the Cobra, Ace flew around the AO as the APC moved in for an intercept. But Destro and Cobra Commander called in three fangs, two jets, and a large heavy lift helicopter, so Breaker called in Ace, who immediately went weapons hot. The Hilo took off with Cobra Commander's his tank, while the bogeys turned into bandits and climbed to engage Ace. Ace fired two missiles at the Tangos and AMF'd one of the jets, but a shot from the second clipped his wing. So he swept his wings all the way back aft to 68 degrees and dove, put out the fire, and that jet lined up right behind him. In a nosedive, Ace flapped his air brakes and the pursuing jet shot ahead of Ace and then boom, kill shot. With his jet damaged though, Ace had to RTB. Then Ace flew escort for a transport plane loaded up with Joes, a dragonfly, a vamp, and a motorcycle for the trip to Libya in pursuit of Scarface and Destro. Their target was a secret Cobra base 100 miles south of Tripoli. Once again, Ace flew as a spotter for their ground forces. Guess he can just fly around Libya no problem, despite Gaddafi's state-sponsored terrorism and the turmoil in the region at the time. When Cobra attacked Joe's base, Ace and Wild Bill flew tactical air support, with their air-to-ground attacks taking out numerous Cobra tanks and armored vehicles. After the Joes captured Cobra Commander and took him high up into the American Rockies, Ace was seen piloting a C-130 Herc along with Wild Bill, and they buzzed the Joes' position in order to drop off a couple of crates of equipment, including a prefab fortress. When the Dreadnoughts and Cobra attacked McGuire Air Base and destroyed a Sky Striker, Ace was looking forlorn. Don't worry, Ace. Uncle Sam will buy you another Sky Striker, he was told, as he stood in the middle of the still smoldering rubble of his plane. I just had this one broken in, he replied. While awaiting his new plane, Ace flew a training flight in a C-130, which went right over Snake Eye's High Sierra cabin. 
Ace got the cover of issue 34. In this issue, found Ace taking Lady J up in a new Sky Striker so she could train on a new radar system from her R2-D2 position. Meanwhile, Wild Weasel and Baroness were taking up a Rattler from Springfield Municipal Airport for a similar shakedown flight. Ace showed LJ how the IFF readout could differentiate between a target and a non-target right as a civilian 747 passed below them. In other words, there were many thousands of AGLs up. And this just as Wild Weasel had his Rattler at treetop level. Baroness picked up the Sky Striker on her radar, and the radar pings were picked up on Ace's threat display, although LJ's radar didn't show the Rattler because the ground clutter created too much noise and hid the Rattler. That's when Wild Weasel fired two heat-seeking missiles at the Sky Striker. The two pilots quickly engaged in an epic dogfight above the city that left both planes aflame, out of ammo, and full of mutual respect for one another. And at the end of it, as they both flew past each other, they both gave each other a salute, and neither of their co-pilots understood what was happening. But both Ace and Wild Weasel recognized the incredible level of skill that both pilots had. As I said in my Wild Weasel video, it's an issue with some of the greatest aerial combat in all of comic books. Shortly after this, as Deep Six's depth charges deployed from the shark had no effect on a Cobra bunker submerged in the Gulf of Mexico, Ace's Sky Striker was loaded up with a tactical nuke on the U.S.'s flag, a weapon. Weapons loader said, this is scary. I've never loaded one of these for real before. And so Ace replied, then we're even. I've never dropped one. Luckily, the order came in to change out the nuke for 200 tons of HE in conventional weapons. So the Sky Strikers shot off the cat and dropped their bombs on the bunker, which erupted a fault line and gave rise to Cobra Island. The blast was massive and caused a tidal wave that smashed into the U.S.'s flag and had it tilted at a 30 degree angle. So when multiple bogeys showed up on the radar in the island, Ace said he'd take up his Sky Striker, launching even with the deck rolled to the side. He smacked the drink with a large fap but was able to climb surprising the whole crew he took out some of them before ground fire from asps hit his jet and he had to leave ace then flew the recon mission over cobra island the same mission where ripcord jumped out to save his girlfriend candy and in the letters page in issue 57 larry hama established the comic book command structure that he used hawk was co duke was first and xo was between cutter wild bill and yes ace it's an interesting chain of command that doesn't include for some reason people like beachhead and Stalker or Falcon. Ace flew the strike team to Springfield for the invasion of Springfield and the rescue of the real Ripcord. For Cobra Civil War, Ace was part of the air transport and support team along with Wild Bill, Lift Ticket, and Slipstream. Much later, Ace was with Dogfight and Sky Striker 019 and they were hit and on fire attempting to land on the deck of the USS flag at night in the Gulf of Benzene. They made it down onto the deck through the arrestor cables and into the net as a crash team met them. He was later again with Wild Bill flying a C-130 as they dropped the team over Cobra Island for a retaliatory strike. In issue 152, Ace is the pilot that takes Joe Colton and a ghost striker to Washington and who regales Ace with the story of Vietnam and with meeting JFK, which led to the founding of the G.I. Joe team itself back in the 1960s. In the penultimate issue of Volume 1, after Roadblock was stranded during a fight on a plane, Ace was in an X-16 and found Roadblock. Later, once Volume 1 was rebooted, as some Cobra forces yet again attacked the Joe's base, Sneak Peek lays some bats with a LTD. So Ace used that targeting to drop his ordnance, which was a pair of Mark 82 paveway bombs. In the next issue, and on one of the covers too, Ace got a reunion with Wild Weasel. Wild Weasel was there to drop his bunker busters on the pit. So Wild Weasel lined up in the canyon for his bombing run, but he had to break off his flight path as Ace fired a pair of sparrows at him. In the chase, Ace buzzed Tunnel Rat and Tripwire, who were cheering him on from the ground. Ace lined up for a 20 millimeter snapshot, but Wild Weasel rolled inverted and dove. And that's when Wild Weasel lined up for another bombing run while Ace came at him again. After a burst of cannon fire from Ace, Wild Weasel's plane exploded in a twisted mass of superheated metal and smoke and flame. There were no shoots seen as Ace flew his jet right through the debris and, and smoke right above Tripwire and Tunnel Rat. Ace later helped get the relief team down to Sierra Gordo for the Robert Graves rescue op. Ace is the pilot who took Duke to Joint Base Andrews on full afterburner the entire way as Duke raced to reunite with his long-lost wife Claire. And Ace then took off with CoverGirl, who was out to strike back at some CGs when their terrorist plot was discovered. He was then over the land of a million elephants with a payload of GBUs that he dropped right on top of a Revanche Robotics robot. And after a 60 second time delay, it blew the base apart. And most recently, Ace was over Long Island Sound with Slipstream and Dogfight, where they engaged with the Rattlers and Night Ravens above the city in a massive dogfight just before Sean Collins was kidnapped and the Snake Hunt event kicked off. And so that's what Ace has been doing in the main 
lead ARAH title up to this day, but he also participated in a few special missions. In Special Mission 3, Ace got orders from Stalker to attack some SAM sites as a diversion so that Slipstream could steal a Russian VTOL Yak-36. The cover to Special Mission 5 has Ace punching out of his Sky Striker as a Night Raven shot overhead after Burners Ablaze. And later, Ace was in his Sky Striker, Slipstream in a Conquest, and Maverick in a Vector for an air show, but after the demonstration, Firefly broke onto the tarmac with a hot dog truck to steal the Vector. In Special Mission 16, Ace and LJ were in a Sky Striker again, but this time they were tasked with flying a diversionary recon over Cobra Island so that a stealth could come in from another direction. And in the final issue of Special Missions, Ace got to take up the Defiant, the Joe's Space Shuttle, along with Slipstream and Payload. And their job was to see if they could detect the Joe's secret Punta del Mucosa base, but an attack from Cobra called off the mission early, so they came back to Earth, and on descent, Ace was able to shoot down a Cobra Python with the Space Shuttle. And then Ace, because he's an Ace, was able to land the Space Shuttle on the deck of the USS flag without an arrestor cable. In Silent Option 3, Ace shows up on the USS flag still to fly a bomb strike Dawn and Helix in an EA-6 Bravo Prowler to Newark to intercept a Darklonia air cargo plane that was loaded with kids in containers. After the Joe team was stood down in 1994 with issue 155, Ace in the Devil's Due run went back to Hollywood to pick up his stunt pilot career again. And this, of course, until the Joes were reinstated. And when Ace joined back up with the team, Ace flew a Sky Striker as the Joes invaded Cobra Island for another civil war. Also, Ace showed up in the G.I. Joe vs. Transformers alternate reality along with a large number of the Joes' active duty roster. On the animated side, Ace was voiced by Pat Freely. And Ace showed up quite a bit in both seasons, where he's either flying a Sky Striker, briefing before flying a Sky Striker, running to a Sky Striker, or in a rec room or ready room waiting to fly one. His biggest appearances, though, were in Season 1, however, because by Season 2, he only showed up in Arise or Pen to Arise and Sink the Montana, and he said nothing in both of those episodes, and this probably because Slipstream took over the main pilot position. In fact, Ace wouldn't say anything again until Valor vs. Venom, where Ace is seen sort of flying a Thunderwing. He was also in G.I. Joe the movie, but again, he said nothing. Ace was in Pyramid of Darkness, but really only said a couple of things during the whole five-part event. In Cobra Stops the World, Ace was with Duke when they were engaged by Rattlers. You're the Ace, Ace, Duke told them after Ace said to hang on. But in a canyon, their jet was hit with a missile and they were forced to eject. In a cowardly move, Cobra shot their parachutes, but they landed in a river at the bottom of the canyon. They were okay, but Major Blood captured them with help from an indigenous tribe armed with bows and arrows, although they managed to escape by stealing a Rattler. In 20 questions, Ace was in the ready room at the pit, or the rec room, watching Spider-Man. Ace was back in a Sky Striker for Synthoid Conspiracy, flying in war games, but then grounded as the fake generals had deactivated the Joe team. He was still in the headquarters in Money to Burn, but this time he was playing his favorite poker game. In Cobra Soundwaves, Ace tangles with some Rattlers over the desert, and while chasing the Rattlers, Cobra shot Soundwaves from a cannon and forced Ace, Roadblock, and Gung-Ho to eject, and when they hit the ground, they were captured. In the Games Master episode, Ace was in a Sky Striker over Greenland when some Vipers shot him down. This is the third Sky Striker this month, he said to himself as he hit the snow. I guess he's not as much of an Ace as he is in the comic books. Destro then rolled up with four his tanks and captured him. In an episode called The Germ, Ace was with a squadron of Sky Strikers and they fired on this gelatinous germ, which threw their missiles back up at him and Ace's canopy was shattered and his jet was hit. So he set it down and borrowed a farmer's biplane to crop dust the germ, but then the germ shot the crop dust chemicals back up at Ace and he crashed the biplane too. In the wrong stuff, Cobra used a satellite, which actually turned out to be a space station manned by Dreadnoughts, to take over the global airwaves, so the Joes installed rocket boosters on their Sky Strikers to get up there to take them out. Only they were taken out and ended up floating in space, so Ace told them to open up their oxygen valves, which would propel them back down to Earth, somehow avoiding burning up in the atmosphere, but then used their parachutes when there was enough O2 to slow down their descent. So they made it back to the pit, and Ace trained the rest of the Joes to go back up and attack again. And Shipwreck was complaining about push-ups, and Ace told them, stronger is stronger, no matter where you are. Ace then showed them zero gravity and gave them a go in a centrifuge and a few other training exercises. Most of them washed out, so Sky Striker, Space Force would be Ace, Scarlet, LJ, Alpine, Roadblock, and Wild Bill. Ace was hit when they went back up and tumbling through space while the rest of the team attacked and destroyed the space station. They rescued Ace and brought him back to Earth, where he was laid up in the infirmary at the pit. On the action figure side, Ace's first action figure debuted in 1983 as the pilot for the XP-14F Sky Striker. This Ace was also part of a couple mail-away offers like North Atlantic, Operation Deep Six, and Special Mission Drivers. While Ace is closely associated with the Sky Striker, 
Striker Jet, he took quite a tour through the years with other platforms. In 92, Ace's file card gave him the prototype name of Wendell instead of Brad. But that wasn't the only change. Ace changed out his white and orange flight gear and donned a blue flight suit to fly the G.I. Joe Battlecopter. For Battle Corps in 1993, Ace was boxed with the Ghost Striker. In 97, Ace flew a Toys R Us exclusive A-10 Thunderbolt, one of my favorite real-world planes. The next year, 1998, Ace was boxed with a Conquest X-30, which also was another Toys R Us exclusive. Then in 2004, Ace was boxed with the Tiger Hawk. This version had an interesting story. This Ace was initially intended to be part of the Heavy Assault Squadron set for 2005, but he was bumped up to 2004. But he came out again in 2008, minus his accessories. The gray and black 2004 version came with some TRU exclusives, while there was also a green and black clad figure the same year. In 2008, Ace was carded with Wild Weasel in a comic book reprint of issue 115. The same year, he was released in an yet another TRU exclusive, this time with Wild Bill and Skyduster. In 2010, Ace was boxed with the Air Assault Glider as part of the Rise of Cobra line. And this Ace was intended as a Target exclusive, but wound up on the shelves at Ross instead. Another Ace came out in 2011 for the 30th anniversary line, again boxed with the Sky Striker. 50th anniversary Ace was boxed in a Silent Strike set along with Sightline, a Black Sky Striker, an Orange Hiss Tank, and both a Hiss Driver and a Hiss Gunner. And one more interesting thing, Ace wasn't just Ace for G.I. Joe. Brad Armbruster was also known as Saber Jet, a member of the Earth Corps for another line with Hasbro called Inhumanoids. Flint Dill, a screenwriter on the animated series, confirmed that this was intended to be the same guy, and more, that the worlds of Hasbro are all interconnected, from Marissa Fairborn to Hector Ramirez to Brad Armbruster. And so there you have it, that's the story of Ace. That's a wrap on this one my friends, thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe, I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.